I have this promise, which I love. All who go to work, trusting in what they themselves can do. What do you see? Who, all who go to work, trusting not in what they themselves can do, because we have a habit to lean on the flesh, but in what God can do for and through them, will certainly realize the fulfillment of the promise. Greater works than these shall he do, he declares, because I go unto my Father. And truly, he doesn't mean we're going to do bigger, bigger things necessarily, but he is telling us that we will be doing a, a vast work for him in whatever capacity that he does put us in. Um, and I, I put this in there because I just happen to like it. Health is the force that moves humanity, is it not? When we're healthy, we're able to move, and we're able to move others, and we're able to do whatever God has called us to do. But sickness stops God being able to work through us. And so it is so important to be in good health. And then this is a, oh, let me see. How do I do this, John? Um, wait a minute. Uh, you know, remember when he embellished those for me? I got to make that drop down. See? There used to be the, the little, hit it once more. Here? Okay, there it goes. It, it, they rigged this a little differently for me today, so I'm having to learn. But this is so true. Don't you believe this in almost everywhere? You know, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why do we have so much sickness? Why do we have all the problems that we're having? Because we don't accumulate knowledge. We, we run on our own what? What we think instead of accumulating knowledge. So um, just bear with me because this is going to. Anyway, here is what it is. God, good health is God's will. Whenever possible, in attempts at physical healing, natural remedies are the preferred therapeutic agent. And it really is, so many times it gets reversed. We do all the medical things, and then we come and say, okay, I want to do natural. And many times at that point, they've gone too far. It's much better for us to find out what's going on with our bodies and do everything natural that we can do. And you know when you pray and you ask God to enter into things, whatever may be going on, you can be sure he will enter in and guide you in whatever it is you need to do. Um, I have to tell you, as this is happening right here, I, we had another lady here with her family that were here for years. And when I finished my presentation, her little boy, he was really into computers, went up and took my computer. I didn't know what he was doing. And he took it to the back of the room and he embellished all this. And I don't know how to undo it. But it's kind of cute how he did all this. But you can see here, natural remedies, you know, hydrotherapy that's massage, aloe, charcoal, clay. We're going to talk, we're going to have one on the kitchen cabinet. You know, garlic, salt, cayenne, pepper. And if I get a chance, I'm going to tell you all about pine pollen. <laughs> one lady here already knows some. But amazing, natural remedies, what are they? They're cheap. I mean, it costs nothing in many cases. You know, they're ready available if we know about them. Um, don't have to have any big education to use natural remedies. Children can use it, you know. Uh, you can treat the cause and not the symptoms. Now, what treats the symptoms? Drugs treat the symptoms. But here we're talking about we're going to treat the cause. Now, when you treat symptoms, it is true. You can get quick results, can't you? You can stop a pain. You can... Stop vomiting, you can do this. When you use natural uh, remedies, and this is something you need to, to really uh, grasp and keep in your mind because when you're helping people, if they don't get well in the next few hours or the next day, they think, ah, this doesn't work. But you have to explain to them, always educate the people that you are working with. Because when they're educated, like you've been educated, then they will understand what's going on because this process can take a little bit longer. Why is that? Where we're not treating the symptom, but what happens when we're treating the, the cause? We're in, it's working within our body and it's healing from the inside out. And when we get well, we're well. 
Many times you may use drugs that you're treating the symptom, and after you get through whatever is going on, what do you have to do then? You got to get rid of the drug, the, the aftermath of the drugs that you've suffered. You don't always feel the greatest until all that gets out of your body. Well, that's not the case when we're using natural remedies. That's the beauty of natural remedies. Now, I have here natural means used in accordance with God's will brings about what? Supernatural results, and that is true. If we ever have time in this, and, and usually these classes go pretty fast, we could just tell you amazing stories how God, when he enters in, that I've walked away and looked up at the sky or whatever and said, now, God, I didn't really do anything, and I know for sure I didn't. You know, sometimes it's very prevalent that you know God entered in in a miraculous way because sometimes I didn't even have the right things to work with. But guess what I the, guess what the major thing I had to work with was was prayer. You know, I would even tell God in my mind, Lord, you know I don't have what I need and you know that, but I'm asking you to enter in and do that which I cannot do. And I've seen amazing things. So always remember, when you're working with people in health, whatever the issue may be, you ask God to come, as long as they're okay with it. And if they tell you, no, I don't want prayer, you still do it in your mind. And you ask God to enter in and to work through you and do that which you can't do. Because who's, you can do all the natural remedies in the world, but who's the ultimate healer? Is God is the ultimate healer. And we have to really realize that. Um, like, oh, did I mess up? Wait, let me get back here. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, here it goes. <laughs> okay, without putting into each one of these, hydrotherapy goes right back, right back to the Babylonians, you know, the Egyptians, the Romans, um, the Greeks. In fact, I think it was in Greece, it was a law that you had to take a, a hot, uh, like a hydro bath, uh, was it twice a week? Something like that. It was an actual law in Athens, I think it was. You had to do it by law because they believed in all these baths. See, sometimes we look at the Roman baths and we think, oh, that was just some fun thing they were doing. No, they were doing it for health reasons in all various parts of the world. In the United States, we were using it. In fact, 1918, when we had that terrible uh, flu that we had in this country, People were dying by the thousands, not just in this country, but all over the world. And we, there was one little uh, town in Pennsylvania, I think it was, that there was a physician and his nurse, and they treated everybody with what I'm going to show you tomorrow, fomentations. Nobody died in that town. They all lived. In fact, we'll tell you how you can go to YouTube and see Helene and I doing this particular treatment on YouTube because it's, it's quite extensive and it's a lot to do. So what you don't grasp here, you can go into YouTube and you can slow it up and stop it and you can finally get the whole thing. But we did that because uh, Mountain Media Ministry at that time was worried, you know, we, remember that scare? We were gonna have this big epidemic here in the United States with flu. So they wanted to get that on the internet so they could reach out to people that people could do this because it saved lives over and over again back in those days. So, um, and it goes back, you know, John Wesley in 1747, he wrote a book, you know, and I don't want to go into all these, but it, you know, we can go way back, you know, when the Water Journal uh, by Dr. Thratcher in 1850. So it's nothing new, it started way, way back. People learned what water would do for them. Um, oh dear, okay. Now, hydro means what? It means water. And then therapy means that we're doing something with water to bring about health. Now, and there's just three forms. We have water, we have ice, and we have steam. And we're going to talk about that as we get in it, into it, how we use each one of these things in various kinds of conditions. We will use one or the other, and sometimes we use two in, in various treatments. Um, now, this is the most, begins the most amazing part of hydrotherapy as far as I'm concerned. It is without question the most powerful non-poisonous means of quickly moving the nourishing healing blood in and out of the diseased body part. And you're gonna see how that's done in just a minute, I think on the next slide. 
we're going to have that because that's what hydrotherapy does. And what I'm going to teach you now, I'm going to question you on every day so you have homework so that you can learn about this because this is the most vital part in understanding what's going on. And this is the thing that everybody you give these kind of treatments to, you want to teach them this. Because what is the theory? If they believe here, what happens here? Health begins here, see, because the mind connects with the body. And I learned and I made, I begin to do my presentations this way because one time I could tell the woman, the patient I was working on, I could just tell by the look on her face, she thought this was total foolishness. Mm -hmm. So when I asked her, she told me. She said, how in the world can what you're doing do anything about my condition? I mean, she just thought it was foolishness. And I thought, okay, so I did a little quick teaching thing right there while she was on the table. But afterwards, I got all this together to teach her because if they think it's foolishness, are they going to get a good response? They're not going to get a good response. So I learned from then on, if I gave a fever treatment, a steam bath, whatever it was, I sat down with that patient and I taught them all about it so that they knew when they got that treatment, they knew what was happening in their body and then they're going to get a good response. Now, when they would be on the table or in the tub or whatever I was doing, I'd question them again. And then I would always say at the end of my questioning, are you going to get well? I mean, can you help but not get well? If we're moving the bad blood out and bringing the good blood in with all the nutrition, you're going to get well. And I wanted them to get that to where it was in their heads. So I'm going to be questioning you guys on this every class so that you get it and then you do this when you're teaching and talking to somebody. You just don't do a treatment just to do a treatment. You want them to be educated because not only that, you want them to be able to go and do this for somebody else when they're well. You know, you don't want them dependent on you. You want them to be able to do their cells and be able to help other people, but mostly to understand. Now, there's a lot of theory in, in hydrotherapy, but what I'm going to teach you is just the simple thing, and it's all you need to know. If you know this, then you'll know what's getting ready to happen and how your body is actually going to heal. Um, okay. How it works. And if you had your books, the blood vessel is in your book uh, somewhere. I haven't gone through this new book. Helena, find it for me. Page two. Okay, you've got it. It's because I made sure this and the one on skin is in there so that you can understand. But see, if you look here, how it works. Now, here's heat. What does heat do? Causes what? Dilation or enlargement of the blood vessel. See this here? This is what's happening, you know. And, and of the area it is applied to, as much as 40%. But this is some of the most amazing part. Besides dilating it, look what it does. It pulls deep congestion and impurities to the surface and thereby entering the bloodstream, thus relieving the internal congestion of the organ surrounding the tissue. It dramatically increases the what? What do we need when we've got infection and we're sick? White blood cells. Raising what? That's the part of the immune system. So. And it, and, and it also, when we're pulling this congestion to the surface, it is at the same time bringing in good nourishing blood that has what in it? Oxygen, nutrition, white blood cells into this infected area. You know, like let's say it was bronchitis or a type of a pneumonia that we have. That's what it's going to do. Now, when we take that off after three minutes or two or five or whatever we're doing it with, now it's going to be cold. Now, what does cold do? It constricts. So now you just imagine this. All this has been brought to the surface. We're going to constrict it so it goes back through the cleansing organs of the body, which are, should have it up here, your liver, your lungs, and your kidneys. Here it is. Those are your cleansing organs of your body. Now we come right back and we put heat on the area again. And what's it going to do? When we put that heat on, what happens? It's going to dilate, and then what's it going to do? Pull, to the, pull what? The impurities to the surface, so it can go back through the bloodstream when we constrict the blood vessels. And when it's pulling that blood into that area, 
It's pulling what? Where is it at up here? It's pulling white blood cells. It's pulling nutrients and oxygen. Now let me ask you, is this person going to get well? Is this area going to heal? I mean, how can it not heal if you think about it? When we're eliminating the congested blood and the illness that's in there and we're bringing in good blood with good oxygen and good nutrition and white blood cells, I mean, how can it not heal? Now, it might not heal on that first treatment, but when we do a number of treatments, it may take several days, it could take a week, it depends what the condition is, and it depends on their vitality of how quickly they heal. But they, I mean, you've got to heal unless you just fight it and want to be sick. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's what you want to know, and that's what you want you, whoever you're helping to know that principle, because then their mind will connect with their body and you can expect them to get well. And you know, there's nothing more um, cheering to the heart of a sick person than to know there's a possibility they're going to get well. You know, that alone buoys them up and, and moves the healing process in their body. Now, <clears throat> uh, the next thing is the skin. That is uh, the reflex, and it's right here, it should be, it's the keyboard, I call it, of hydrotherapy. It is through the skin, touching your skin. You know, you react if cold goes on it, if heat goes on it, you know, that the most of the treatments are carried out. And it tells you this is possible because of the connection it has to all the other body parts and to all the other organs that are in there and to the internal organs. It can be stimulated depending what we're doing with the heat or with the cold or with the steam, sedated or relieved of waste as the requirement may be. Now, why? Well, the skin is what in our body? It's, it's an organ. Do you realize that? Our skin is an a organ, and it's the largest organ in our body or of, on our body, and it is also the biggest eliminating of poisons and toxins in our body is through our skin. It is a specialized organ to which all other parts of the body directly or indirectly connect to maintain their function. Everything connects to the skin in the body, wherever, whatever it may be, in some way, through the nerves, through the blood vessels. It is also one of the most sensitive, is it not? Somebody touch you with something cold or hot or cut you or whatever, boy, you move quick. You know, there's no even thought you move that quick. So pressure, heat, and cold are perceived through the skin and acted upon by the body almost without ever being aware of it. And that is so true. So the skin plays a major role in here. And, uh, and this, these are the two major things that you need to know when you're doing hydrotherapy. It's simple, but you don't need, if you don't ever study or read anything else, these two will get you through working through hydrotherapy. Now, yes, you have to prepare your patient. You have to, you know, do a number of other things and know, and hopefully we will cover as much of that as possible. So now, um, I will stop that for now, but we're going to go in to, I'm going to show you the hydro kit. I started doing this years ago because if someone got sick and I needed to go give a treatment, let's say I wasn't in the center and I had to go, I was running all over the house trying to find the towels, the blankets, get the buckets, do this. I mean, it was a fiasco. Or if I was at somebody else's house, it was the same thing. I had to run all over the place trying to gather up. And finally one day I thought, you know, this is, this is foolish. It's too stressful on me, even if one of us got sick in the house. And if you get sick and want to do a hydrotherapy treatment, you don't feel like running all over the house hunting things down. So I thought, you know what? What we really need here is we need a kit. So I developed this kit, and I'm going to show you. I, I've got three kits, and this I'll show you the other kits on the other day. But I'm going to show you how I did this kit. So that all I have to do, if anybody's sick in the home, if anybody's sick somewhere else where I have to go, all I got to do is go grab my kit and go. And now that makes things easy because then I know I have everything in here. And that's what makes it good. So I encourage you to uh, make yourself a kit. And I'm going to later uh, today, I'm going to show you how to do... Um, compresses. And every compress I have is in a separate bag. One's for the neck, 
one's for the chest, one's for the feet. So I have all these separate compresses in here in separate bags, and I'm going to tell you about how to do that in the class. So all of these things are in here. I have uh, another um, type of hydro treatment that I kind of made up. And, and, and I've made the way to do it for stimulating your adrenal glands when they're exhausted, and it works like a charm. And so I have all these in here. You can see I have them for the wrist, for the knee, for the ankle, you name it, for the ear, you name it. I've got them all here, and then I'll show you, like I said later. I even have a cup in here and a straw in here. I have my steam, my little portable steam cabinet. I'll have it set up tomorrow so you get to see it. I have my gloves for doing friction, and I'll show you how you can make those and how you can uh, use a washcloth if you don't have it. I have extra uh, Walmart bags or whatever ones that I have in here so that when I'm doing, when I'm heating up the fomentations. Now, some people are against microwave. When it comes to um, hydrotherapy, I love a microwave. You don't have to keep it in the same room unless you put a neutralizer on it, and then the microwaves won't hurt you at all. But what's nice about it, and I'll have it in here tomorrow, I think it is, I do it. Um, you can heat those foamies up just like that. When you have to cook them, you got a good 45 minutes to go. And then you got to deal with the hot water where I can wet these down, put them in a Walmart bag and stick it in the microwave and I have it in just a few minutes. And so it's a wonder, and if you get a little one like I have, I can carry it anywhere I go in the United States. Now it's not going to work when I go overseas. I might have to boil, I might, if it's in the jungle, I got to light a fire and so forth. But at least, you know, I'm not over there right now. So as long as I'm here in this country and have this availability, because when you're doing these treatments, you also want to save on your own energy and keep your own health. So do things as, as simple as you can and make it easy for you to do the treatment. If it gets too complicated and too stressed out because you don't know where this is and that is, and, and it's, you're not going to do it. And so I hope through these three days, I'm going to show you the thing that I had the discouragement about 30, 40 years ago, is that I learned how to give it to everybody else, but when it came to me, what am I going to do if I get sick? I don't have anybody to help me. So I will teach you how to give to others, and I will teach you how to do it to yourself. And then that way, if you get sick, you don't have to hire somebody to come in there, and then you got to teach them. When you're sick, you're sick. You don't feel like going through all that. And, and I remember the time that they had me, in which I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Do I do the foot bath today? Oh, yeah, I'll be able to tell you all that story then. Okay, in here I have these towels. Here's my, here's my fomentation pads are all in here. Um, I also have, I have my thermometer in here. I have all my towels that I need in here. I have, uh, which you're going to learn that in the next treatment, and you're going to love it, the snorkel for the sinus. I have my shower curtain that I put on the bed, and I'll explain some of that to you when I'm doing the foamy. I have all my army blankets in here, you know, or whatever blankets. Wool blankets hold the heat of the fomentation the best. But I'm going to tell you other things you can do if you're in a pinch. And, you know, when I was over in Eastern Europe, you know, I had to use whatever was available. I couldn't carry all this stuff on the plane. So I just used whatever was available in people's homes when I had to do some emergency things. So anyway, I have my washcloths in here. And if I had to, because somebody would have a terrible sinus infection, you're going to learn the best treatment you ever learned in your life on sinus. However, there's some where their face is hurting them so bad and you're doing a foamy, then we have this where we can put this over their face and keep it nice and warm and, and opening up the blood vessels and then they feel more comfortable if their head's really hurting them while we're doing the fomentation. So, and, I'll, and at any point you can come up and you can look in here and see how this is done. But if you're really wanting to be medical missionaries or just be able to help people when you can or... Um, uh, for your own family, whatever it may be, pack yourself a kit and stick it somewhere, and then you can always just go get it immediately and you have it. That is more encouraging to do hydrotherapy because you have it ready. If you're running all over the place trying to pull everything together, you're going to wear out, and I'll tell you my story uh, uh, when I'm teaching you about the foot bath. Okay, um,
I think Helena is next, and she's going to be talking about the fever treatment. In your notebooks, you have uh, a book called Simple Home Remedies. And I would like you to turn to page 14. It's called Hot Half Bath. We call it um, the fever treatment here because basically uh, what we're doing is elevating the fever and giving you an artificial fever so that your immune system reacts to that. And it, it's basically saying something's wrong here. We got to, you know, marshal our forces and attack it. So, I need my chair here, and uh, Katie has offered to be my patient. Uh, I don't know if you recognize this, but this is our bathtub. Okay, can you sit on the chair? Yes. Okay. Now, this, this is the, the hot half bath and the uh, fever treatment are what we do here at UG Pines for the most serious things lupus, cancer, uh, chronic fatigue, the, the really tough things that we do. And, uh, but the, the way that I used it personally was for cold or flu, but particularly the flu. It's, it's just a grand treatment for that. Um, indications, it says here, muscle pain, pain and spasm of arthritis. I've had arthritic patients who literally ran down the hall to get into the hot water because it, for some reason, pain just disappears. It's not permanent, uh, but they, it gives them some relief. Muscle or joint stiffness, fatigue, flu, and the colds. You will notice in this book that in the front, it has a, a list of disorders, and it'll tell you which one of the treatments to use for the various different disorders. Um, contraindications, the thing, you have to be wise in your work with people, and um, severely obese people, it's, it's very, very difficult to heat them up in the water. The more mass there is, the longer it takes to heat them up. Um, severe hypertension, people with really bad high blood pressure shouldn't be done. Uh, any tendency to hemorrhage, um, any disturbances of heat sensation, people with bad neuropathy in their feet can't, can't feel the temperature. Um, extreme feebleness or debility. Uh, th this is a vigorous treatment, and you need people who are able to tolerate it. Okay, we want to have a bath thermometer so that you know what the temperature is of the water. Um, we need a couple of bath towels, uh, a basin of ice water. We want some nice cold water. Uh, two washcloths, We'll put those in there in our ice water. A folded uh, bath towel for a, oh well let's see, shower cap to protect the hair. A folded bath towel for a head pillow. I use a air inflatable little raft that the kids surf on the ocean with. Have you seen them? Now, you can't blow it all the way up. You'd float on top of the water. But if you inflate that thing there ever so slightly and fold it in half, you end up with something like this, and they can sit on that air mattress and lean against it, and it's very comfortable. Um, for a prolonged treatment, the ice bag. Where's your ice bag? Oh, here it is. Ice bag and cool water. And uh, Valerie says she always uses a big jar because you need lots of water. Okay. I'm going to prepare my patient. 
Um, she can wear a bathing suit or uh, one of those lovely hospital gowns. I'm going to put a bath mat down. Let's see. Um, we usually keep a record of the temperature. I take her oil temperature before she gets in the water. Um, you all know how to take a pulse on the thumb side of the hand. You just uh, count the, the number of beats. We usually just do it for 15 seconds and multiply by four. Um, and the water temperature. And then every, maybe every seven minutes or so, uh, you can do it again. And you're keeping track. You don't want the heartbeat over 140. If it goes over 140 and you haven't finished your treatment, the first thing you can do is put an ice bag on the heart. That'll slow the heart down. Um, it says, do not leave the patient alone. Um, don't do it after a full meal. Um, those are all very good and reasonable directives. The treatment room should be warm. Um, assemble all your, uh, not ingredients, but your supplies. Uh, before you start to make sure you have everything you need. And we usually set the bed up uh, because after this treatment, um, they're usually kind of tired. And besides that, one of the best parts of the treatment is the rest that they have afterwards. And we put the, um, do we, the shower curtain, you have it? Oh, that's all right. We put a shower curtain down on a fully made bed and a sheet and, well, two sheets if you want, um, and a blanket um, to protect the bed. So when, when you're all done with your treatment, you can just pick that stuff up in one fell swoop and take it to the washing machine. Okay. Assist your patient to the tub. All right, now, can you, can you, I want your back there, and we have that set up so you can lean on it. And while she's getting her there, just look at this. Can you see what the high temperature does? Speeds up metabolism, inhibits growth of the baby viruses or bacteria, literally burns the enemy with the I mean, Do you want to I mean, I put your knees up? Because that's usually how it is. And I'll show you some more that she can do that. Okay. You, in most bathtubs, this is a very big bathtub, um, you, you're, the knees, especially with a larger person, the knees are up and the shoulders are out of the water. And so we put a, a towel over the parts of the body that are out. Um, I'm going to have a pitcher available because what we're going to do as we go along is we're going to base the towel. Uh, I'm going to scoop up water and pour it over the knees and over the shoulders as we go along. Um, I am going to have my cold cloths available so that, uh, well, I think normally we would take our glasses off. Um, you can the way you keep them in the hot water is to uh, do cold on the forehead, on the, on the, under the chin, on the neck, on the cheeks. Another way of doing it is to put, put a hand towel. And of course, you want to wring it out. You don't want it drippy. And and you can put that on by overlapping it like that, and it'll, it'll stay there. Uh, Valerie puts her, this, in a sack. I take a hand towel and make a sack like this. You're not on the mic. You know, like a bag. And then I... You're not on the mic. Oh, oh, 
I take a, a hand towel, make a bag, put it in there, and then you can sit that right on top of the head, and especially when you're doing it for yourself, this is what you're going to want to do. You, and then you to put a towel in the back of this against the back wall of the tub, and it'll hold that in place for you. So you can do it yourself. But I don't encourage you to do it yourself. Have somebody somewhere in the house until you really feel comfortable by doing it. You know, I can do my own. I don't worry. So go ahead. All right. Now, in our book, it says the treatment should continue for 10 to 20 minutes uh, until sweating is profuse and the oral temperature reaches 102 to 103. When we're treating the more serious things, we say get the oral temperature to 102 and maintain it for 20 minutes. Keep it at that higher temperature for 20 minutes. Um, OK, to end this treatment, I am, you can either use the mitts that she showed there, or you can take the washcloths and just wrap them around like that. And uh, we, we're going to do a cold pour, I mean a cold mitten friction on, on the legs. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll let the water out. <laughs> That's true. Now, wait, wait. I'm going to do your arms and the back. And we usually hand the girl the cloth, and she does her chest. OK, now we're going to have you de-tub. De and you're going to sit down. You can sit down. OK, and now we're going to put her, dry her off, put her in pajamas. Make sure that her feet are covered with socks and slippers. And then she can go into the bed and rest for an hour. It's, it's very effective treatment. And for a person that is really sick, how often do you um, you will certainly no more than once a day, and no more than five times a week. Um, with, with the cancer, they, they do it five times a week for three weeks, and then they have three weeks off because you lose electrolytes with that kind of sweating. Plus, your immune system gets a plateau after five days. <laughs> How do you oh, replace oh, yeah. By just eating for two days. There are certain foods you eat of that replace well, the electrolytes. You you can sustain the electrolytes while they're in the tub with just some salt water, or you know if you want to use. Oh dear, I don't know all this. This is a whole new. We, we got to get two of these. This is. Yeah, but they see they're filming. I have to have. I don't know if I got this thing, John. Yeah, well, is it backwards? Okay, do I have it backwards, you think? I don't know what I'm doing. I think it's backwards. It's supposed to be this way, right? I had it backwards. No wonder it wouldn't stay on. Okay, here we go. We'll get it. I'm glad they can edit. Um, just to show you just a couple more things, um, and the, the most major thing besides doing the treatment or you're not going to get results, is you must hydrate your people before the treatment. Make sure they have drank plenty of water, and then while they're in any treatment that you're giving, you keep giving them water throughout the whole treatment. They will not get a good response if they're not hydrated. Do you understand that? They, because in this treatment, unlike most of our others, except in the steam, they lose tremendous amount of water from their body. So you have to keep hydrating them. And that's the reason I use a quart jar, because I, it's plenty of water there. And especially if I'm doing it for myself, um, you can keep them hydrated through the whole treatment. And that's the most major thing, or you're not going, 
I'm telling you, you will not get a response, a decent response, and you may not even be able to get the fever up. And so the more you sustain that fever there, the better response they get. And I just want to show you this real quick. This is what happens. Your white blood count goes up 20 to 35 percent. White blood cells go up to 200, 300 percent. And your hemoglobin, if you've got a low hemoglobin, you can get it up by just doing fever treatments. Now let me ask you, if all this is taking place when you're giving this treatment, are you going to, your body going to start recovering? Yes. Absolutely. Now, you'll love this, and I, I mean, we've got to gallop along. Now, look, I want to ask you as a class, could you be here at least by 25 after tomorrow? Because there's so much information we give in here, it's hard to get the most important points in in the small amount of time that we have. So if you can get here by 25 after, it would be a big help for us. This is what happens. I love this little guy. This is his arm. That's his arm. It's called a pseudopod. And here comes the bacteria, the virus into the body. And he's the first, he's on your front line. And so his job is to do this. He reaches out and he grabs these bacteria or these viruses and he pulls them in. And guess what he does? He eats them up, providing you have a good immune system. But the fever treatment that we're giving does this for you in your weakened condition. Here is a cancer cell. Here's the white blood cells closing in on it. And let me see. Next. You can see here. Here's the T killer cells attacking it. Look, it's dissolving it. And look at the next one. This is amazing. It the live killer T cells have killed the cancer. Isn't that amazing? And this is what we're trying to achieve when they're in the fever treatment. Whether it be cancer, or whether it be whatever else is going on in their body, this is what we're trying to achieve. And if we're able to sustain that temperature, we're going to achieve it. Okay, now we're gonna talk about my next favorite thing, and you can go to, um, you will have how to pack your hydro kit on page four. And then if you go to page five, starts the little heating compress charts. And that's what I want to show you about. Heating compress, wait a minute. Um, I like to show a little bit, it's only four slides here, about a heating compress, and I forgot to change that one. Um, but anyway, there's various ones for the body. I have, what, down there, four, five, six, seven, I got eight of them that I've done. But a heat, heating compress basically is, it's a compress of a mild application of whatever it is you're trying to do, whether it's a foot bath or, or a chest uh, congestion. And so what it does, it's moist heat for several hours by means of a cold compress applied to the part of the body and covered with dry flannel. And you're going to see how we do that in a minute. Um, when the cold cloth, uh, when the cold wet cloth, but it's wrung out real good, and I'm going to show you, is applied to the skin surface, is covered with material which prevents circulation of air, it soon warms up. You know, and the effect is that of a mild application of moist heat. Now, this is what happens. When we apply the cold, what happens when we apply cold? What did I just tell you in the other class? What happens to the blood vessel? It constricts. Okay, so now we've applied the cold, and we want it as cold as ever. I take that compress that I'm going to put on the body and put in the freezer for a few minutes. I mean, I really make them get a reaction, and I'll show you that. Apply it here. The body temperature drops down, and then it over the next several hours, and it could be all night if you want. It won't last all night, but it'll last good into a portion of the night. Now the body, all that cold, what's the reaction after it drops down like that? The body wants to heat it up. So now it starts to pull as it heats. It starts to pull blood into the air, and it slowly goes all the way up here till it's about 100 degrees. This little thing, and your what is your natural body temperature? We used to say it was 98.8, but anymore it's like 97. Point that, you know. So you can run anywhere from 96 to 98 is the normal body temp. So now it goes up here, and then 
For the next few hours, it just goes down, down, down until you're back to normal. And let me tell you one of the reactions that you'll have when you know the treatment is finished. You won't want that on you for another five minutes. You'll take that compress off immediately. If you have a charcoal poultice on there, it'll aggravate you when it's done and you'll want to take it off. So it's always the signal that treatment's finished, just take it off. Most people will get that kind of reaction. Um, what we do, uh, I may as well show this one, the heating joint compress. I have them here and I have some of these cards in here. I have it for the ear, this is for the uh, wrist, and I'll show you, this is for the chest, this is for the neck, this is for the foot, this is for the elbow, this is for the stomach. So I have all these that I have made because just as soon as I was thought I had my kid all fine, then here somebody else comes up with something else. I was like, well, I gotta make another compress. So I've just made them all. Now what I do when I do my compress, and that's what some of these are in here, but I do have to put more because I keep inventing more of them, is this is a quick fix. <laughs> and what this does, you know, when you hear you're learning something and you don't really have any anything come up to use it. So three, four months could go by, and then all of a sudden somebody needs a compress. And you remember what Valerie was telling you in the class, but you're like, how do I do that? How do I do that? And you get all panicky, and you go get your book, and you try to read it, which you should do that. But this is for a quick one. In here, it just basically says heating compress for joint, and it tells you what it'll do. It'll relieve joint pain, inflammation from arthritis, you know, et cetera. And then the directions are... Take, take this wet cloth here and you put it in cold water. Now I put it in cold water and then I wring it out really good and then I stick it in the freezer for just a few minutes because I want them to have a real good reaction. And then you wrap it with plastic and if you don't have it, you can wrap it anyway with wool. Now I can show you this on someone in a minute because um, Usually I have all the kids here, and I don't know where they are. <laughs> no, I have like the, all the little ones. You want me to do you? Okay, because you can keep your pants on, and that'll, I can just go right over your pants. But now you don't do this over the pants. You do it on a fresh knee. You know, the skin is out, and this works wonderful. So anyway, so this will tell you quickly what you can do. And it's such, it's a cheat sheet. And I just love it because I didn't, you know, sometimes when you're in a hurry to do something, you can read a whole page and don't even know what you read because you're anxious. So, you know, when you get a chance, definitely read so you can learn, but this will get you through that quick. And you don't have to look it all up. So if I had this would be the cold out of the freezer is how I do it. I wrap it and I pin it on, but put your hand there for lack of time. And then I go ahead and I should have had a bigger piece of plastic, but you want the plastic to come over top a little bit, and I must have mixed it up. But anyway, you just pretend this is over top. Like, hold that. Oh, dear. I've missed my, but anyway, he can hold it on. I use safety pins, and now here's the wool. Now, depending on what size person you have, you might have something this big or something, you know, smaller. So I have like a couple different ones and I have the um, safety pin and then I put the wool over. Now you have to move fast. Okay, let go. And I pin it on. Hopefully I don't hit you. Okay. Now what I learned over time is when you do a compress like this, whether it be elbow, wrist, you know, you move your wrist, you move your joints, you, and so what happens is we want no air to get in here. It annuls the treatment in a very short time and you won't get a good reaction. You want to be able to keep this closed in that no air gets in it. So I thought, well, how am I gonna do this? I gotta come up with something because I want them to get a good reaction. So what I did was I found old shirts with sleeves like this and I made several different 
uh, covers like this. So you can pull this on your leg, and I, I sewed some elastic at the top, and then it'll come up, and it'll cut, be down there, you know, because the end of the sleeve is, you know, kind of, what do you call that? But uh, yeah, and so it holds the air in. I mean, it holds the heat in, and they can walk around all day long, and no air gets in that compress. So you're able to wear it throughout the day. And so I've made all kinds. I have all kinds of sizes for everything you can imagine. If, you know, I have some small, because you have to have, think of smaller people, so I made smaller ones. And then if you have, from back in the olden days, when I was young, they used to have these leg warmers. So uh, my mom still had some, so I went ahead and pulled that, and you can do something like that. But if you do this kind of treatment, and you don't secure it, that air doesn't get in it, it annuls the treatment, and they will not get the reaction. When we were over in Romania, we taught our children, our students this, and then we sent them out in the village, and they went and we had them do treatments, and so first they were doing compresses. And they would come back, they, then we had them go out the next day and check on everybody. And when, by the time they got back to the center, they were like three feet off the ground. They were so happy. They had so many results from the people because over there we have lots of arthritis, especially in the knees. And I remember my one student, do you remember? She was so excited she couldn't hardly stand it because this lady said she never had such relief. It is wonderful, quick uh, treatment. Now see, you can give a hydro treatment during the day, but then you'll put this on at night. Now you don't put one compress right after the other. You should have at least an hour in between. Why would you do that? If you keep the skin wet too long, what happens? You know, it all shrivels up kind of. But like I said, when the treatment is finished, I've done it enough on myself, in the middle of the night, you'll wake up and that'll agitate you so because the treatment has stopped. So you just take it off and throw it on the floor. You don't have to get up and do anything. But if you're doing it on somebody during the day, you can just take a washcloth, dip it in cold water, and then you can just do this to it and then dry it off and then let them rest for at least an hour if they're having trouble. And then you can go ahead and you can uh, put, the, put another one right back on. It's okay to put it back to back. But why I have them up here, this is one of the other ones. This one is a heating compress for the chest. Now, it'll cover chronic bronchitis, coughing, flu, asthma, pneumonia, all kinds of things. Do the very same thing, but I want to show you how I did this one. So this is wonderful when, you know, the, you know when you've gotten bronchitis or the children are cough. You know, when do you cough the most? At night. And, and you cough and you cough and you cough. How can you stop the coughing? Well, what you want to do is you want to get this area warm because when it's warm, what happens when we warm anything up? What happens? Dilation. And as a result of dilation, it begins to loosen up the mucus that's in the bronchial. And what is it done when we put the heat eventually when it starts? It's, it's bringing blood into that area in it very mildly, but they get wonderful results. It'll stop the coughing. So you just take somebody's T-shirt and you dunk this in cold water and wring it out good. You don't want it dripping at all. And I still stuck it in the freezer for just a few minutes because, and I, and you tell them, look, look, the cold is coming. I want you to know the cold is coming. And so that you get them, their mindset. Anytime you're going to put cold on a, on a body, Particularly, you just tell them the cold is coming, so then their brain will click in and they'll, they might go, <gasps> you know, they might do a little bit of that, but they will accept it better. But if you just slap that on there and you haven't, uh, the mind, the body's never ready for that one. So anyway, just get a t-shirt if you got, make a kit for children if you got children, depending what size your family is. You know, have several cut t-shirts. So this goes in. Now we're just going to pretend. I'm not going to put it over his head. So you would put this down like this. Then you just take a garbage bag like this, kitchen garbage bag, cut the neck out, and cut the arms out. And then you put that over the head like this. And then... I, I decided I'm trying to close this in because now you're going to take this 
you would stuff it down in your pajamas or your pants, because you, you, most of the time it's going to be at night when you're going to do this, unless during the day they're sick, but they're still in their pajamas if they're good and sick. And you're just going to stuff it down in there. And then get yourself a T-shirt like this, because what's it going to do? It closes in down here. Air isn't going to get in. It's going to close in with this turtleneck around the neck. Air is not going to get down in. And then they're going to stuff it down in their pants, and it's going to close it all off. So everything's going to be warm, and then this thing is going to do what it says here, it's going to start heating up. And as this heats up, then it does what? It begins to dilate not just the blood vessels, bringing good blood into the area, but it dilates the bronchi, and that's what you want to do. Because when you dilate the bronchi, it breaks up the mucus more in there, and then they may cough a little bit, but they'll spit a couple chunks out, and then they'll relax, and they're able to sleep. So it's just, it's just a wonderful second treatment, you could say. But let's say you didn't have time for the full-blown one. You can do this, and they'll get results. The most major thing if you want reaction from these kinds of treatments, is that they, you must close them in so the air does not get in or it will annul the treatment. Just remember that. And then the other ones that I have, we, um, I, oh boy, time is really running out. You don't have like a whole No. You can, if it's during the day, you, can, you could end with that, but not necessarily. But, you know, at night, you will... In many cases, you'll wake up and you'll have that irritated feeling. And that always, in any treatment, tells you, you, you know, if you have charcoal compress on, clay on, it'll get to the point you start to feel irritated. And that tells you the treatment is completed. And it'll usually do this with compresses. Maybe not everybody, but it'll usually do it. So the neck is no different, you know, for sore throats and laryngitis and tonsillitis and coughing. You know, same old story. Um... And I have like several sizes I have for big necks, medium sized necks. I have some here for children, you know, all kinds of sizes because this is so good for a sore throat. But this isn't going to work. We wrap it the same way. We put, we put the little cloth in, in water and, um, you know, we, we freeze it. If you have freeze it, we just wrap it around the neck like this. We put the, um, you know, the plastic over it like this, and then in, on goes the wool, or whatever you have. You can use a sock if you're somewhere. You don't have to have all this special stuff. I've used all kinds of crazy things because I may not have available if I'm especially in a foreign country or I could be at somebody's house and and I didn't know they were going to get sick on me or they had a sick child and after I got there they tell me all these you know this child is sick so then you just get a sock you get a thin sock or a thin piece of tea towel if they'll let you rip it or a t-shirt or a rag to make your neck and then you just get a sock and put where here is and cut a piece of plastic out of a plastic bag or whatever but you know what happens when you bend your head this way this will open up, you know, so you could not get as good a treatment. So then what you do is you just find yourself some things like this and make a dicky, you see? And then you pull that down over the head, and this is going to close it right in. <clears throat> and then just like we did for the chest, I always say after this is on, put your pajama top on, and if possible, put another, like, wool sweater over it to really get this heated up. And because especially in the bronchi area, you want this to really heat up good. So always put another heavy sweater over top of the turtleneck. And then this, you would put this around the neck, and then you put your pajamas on, or if you're going to... And then the nice thing is you can wear it all day to work, and nobody knows you got it on. You know, and then you don't attract attention. Everybody's wanting to know, what's that you got around your neck? Now, you can do it if you want to teach them hydro, but if not, if you put this little dicky on, then put your clothes on and go, and it hides it all for you. May I have an object, please, because I'm leaving tomorrow, and I gave this thing to my daughter about 30 years ago, but I didn't know that it could do for me or for any kind of pain on the legs or... Anywhere at all. Look. This I first time here, but I did it because some older Told me to do it on the neck. She was coughing, and it really helped. Oh yeah. But you see, what you talk now that you can put in any part of the body this compress. I didn't know. 
Yeah. Um, For instance, I, you welcome. I've had people with carpal tunnel or wrist kinds of yeah. problems. I thought, how am I going to do this one now? Because the compress they can wear all day. So you can go ahead and give them the treatment at night or whatever. But then what are they going to do all day to keep to help this? Besides, if it's carpal tunnel, they're going to want to stick a brace underneath. Yeah, I but have right now, lady, that she suffered so much with restless legs. Mm -hmm. This could be done too, right? That and sometimes a good hot foot bath, running really hot water many times will help stop it at night. Oh, the restless legs. I'm thinking of, um, okay, we'll do this in a minute. Yeah, because they can't hear you with restless. Okay, we were talking about restless leg. Well, anyway, the wrist is the same thing. Tells you, you know, what it, it's for joint pain, for inflammation, that type of thing. Arthritis. I have people, somebody just recently with arthritis. So I do the same thing. I wet this, put the, put the plastic around it, and then I put the wool or whatever, and I have several different sizes. And then I was saying, now, God, how am I going to close this in? And, you know, God is so good. He can, he, if you pray and you ask the Lord, he'll give you ideas that you wouldn't get any other way. I mean, it's amazing sometimes how he just sticks a picture up in my head. And he did this when I was saying, how am I going to close this wrist in? And, you know, and they're going to be working and using it, and it's going to open up. A wood. They're not going to get really good results. So God gave me, said, well, get a sock. I got a sock, you know, like that's pretty colorful. But I, you know, I'm just showing you the whole sock. All you do is cut the sock across here and cut it right here, you know, in that middle of the heel. And I'll show you what happens. Here it is. So after, after it's all on, you just do this. You just pull this on and it'll go right through there and it'll keep it all protected in no cold weather, no cold, no, uh, will get in there and annul the treatment. And you can wear that all day. So you can just cut a nice heavy sock. If you saw the way I did it, I cut the heel right where that line is, you know, on your socks. And then I cut it where I want it. I want this, I think, a little bit longer, but that, that'll work. I mean, you can come up, you'd be surprised the ideas the Lord will give you about doing things. And so basically, Oh my, we're running out of time. Um, was there another one important, Helena? I have one for the adrenals, but I don't know if we'll be able to get to it. I also have one for the um, elbow, because that is where you're using your arm all the time. It just opens wide up. So the elbow, same thing I do. Tells you here, relieve joint pain, inflammation, arthritis type conditions. Tells you to put it on. And this is how I cover in, you may as well see this one aspect, even though I won't go ahead and do the whole thing, I'll show you this one aspect. What you do is I cut two tops of socks, like this. And if I was working on a man, I'd have to have some bigger socks. But in the meantime, this is how I would do it. Let me get it this way. I would go, I'd turn the sock this way and come all the way up you know, because I'm doing the elbow, so that compress is going to be over quite a bit. Then I turn the sock down the other way, and I put the top over it like this, and I just come right up, and see, it's all protected. You can use your elbow all day long if you want, but no air is going to get up there to annul that treatment, and that's just using sock tops. But I'm just showing you what I do, but you, you might get all kinds of other ideas to do things and how to make it so that they will get a good reaction. Um, and then we'll just tell you about this one real fast. Um, this is, you know, I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to do a hot foot bath. And so hot foot bath is for lots of reasons, but it especially pulls congestion down to the feet from the headache, from the chest, from the abdominal area. It's for sinus, headaches, menstrual cramps, and so forth. And, and I have various different kinds of socks and various different socks. And so all you do with this one is you wet a thin sock, you know, thin cotton sock, and then you just wring it out, stick it in the freezer, <laughs> is what I say if you can. Put it on your feet, and I'm pretend this is your foot, but guess what? If you have bad hands, you can do the same thing for your hands. You can put this on, and then you just have yourself a, a plastic bag. Now, this is a little bit big, but I lost my other bag. And then you can have, you know, a, th a thick sock like this, or you could have 
a wool sock. And if you're somewhere where you can buy wool socks, then you just go ahead and put this all on your feet like this. And you go all night long. And so now the cold is on there. And we're going to tell them when we're get bringing ready to put the cold on, what are we telling them? The cold is coming. And then they pull the warm overneath. And then what it's, what's it going to do? It's going to dilate the blood vessels. It's going to bring good blood into that area. And then it'll start pulling the congestion from here, from here, from here to the feet. And they can sleep all night like this. We had a class that we gave several years ago. We had 12 or 14 students. And they had to fly all in from Canada. And they bought the cheapest flights, so they were flying for like 24 hours. We told them to bring a plastic, two plastic bags and two thin socks and two wool socks. So they really had the nice wool ones from up in the Canada area. We didn't know because we knew they were going to be wiped out and exhausted. And we wanted them to be fresh for the next morning. And we know this will do it. If you are stressed to the max and your brain is wired and you cannot calm down, I don't know of a better treatment than doing this if you're going to go to bed unless you want to soak in some Epsom salts or something in the tub. But you can put this on your feet. And it will begin to pull the congestion away from your brain, and you'll relax, and you'll go to sleep. All of them slept wonderful. But one lady had had a condition in her feet for years, and they, it wasn't neuropathy, but they didn't know what it was. They never, her feet would sting and burn, and she couldn't keep them still, and she couldn't sleep. They'd ache, and they'd pain. Nothing worked for her medically. We did, had her do that treatment, and she told her testimony the next morning. She said, this is the first morning in my life for many, many years. I have no pain. My feet are staying still. I mean, this wasn't a real treatment. I mean, it was just a simple uh, type of treatment that we did. She did it every night for the two weeks that we had them. And it, it, it actually corrected her condition.